Hey snowboarders, uh, welcome back to another video with JG. JG, welcome back to the studio. Thanks, Jeff. Um, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how to choose a snowboard. Obviously, that's a pretty important part of snowboarding, is choosing the right board for you. Yeah. Um, and we're going to kind of split this into three different segments. So if one segment is irrelevant to you, if you already know something, you can skip around in the video. And Hopefully that makes it easier to navigate, and hopefully this is all really helpful information. Should be, yeah. Um, so, in talking with you, you know, we've been kind of discussing how this process goes, um, and the, the first thing we want you guys to do is what I call kind of a self-assessment period. Um, you know, I like, I like the idea of bringing out a piece of paper or a notebook and jotting down some stats about yourself as a rider. Yeah. Um, and kind of some things to focus on the terrain that you that you ride, um, your ability level. Yeah, you want to definitely be honest with your ability level. Yep. And like you were saying, you have the terrain that you ride, your the, the resort that you ride the most. Yep. On um, the conditions you ride the most, and even take into consideration other um, people that you ride with. Yep. You know that might be uh, more advanced than you, or maybe not as good as you. Um, and then try and just think about what your year looks like on the mountain. Yeah. And that'll help you, you know, really determine um, which board and which shape is the best for you. Yep. And uh, if it's your first board, there's a lot of information out there. Um, and, if you know, definitely do some research and, and, and listen to what we have to say and what others have to say. Um, but a lot of people are out there buying maybe their second or third board. And yeah. they already have an idea of what they're looking for in, in, right. in their board shapes. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the honesty, I think, is, is, is key in the self-assessment point. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this on the ski side a lot. Choose the ski for the conditions that you're actually skiing, not the conditions that you want to ski. Yeah. I think it's really easy for skiers and snowboarders to have this picture in our mind of, like, endless powder fields and yeah. stuff like that or you know, just perfect yeah. conditions. And obviously that's not always the case. So. Right. Be accurate and be, be honest with yourself. And a lot of it comes down to geographically where, where you're riding or skiing. And, the, and, you know, early season, a lot of places you're on uh, man-made snow. Yeah. And uh, other places early season you're on natural snow. Right. Um, so just be, you know, fair with yourself. And you might have a trip planned in the winter to go somewhere different. Yeah. You know, and so that's always something to keep in mind as you're picking new shapes out for the season. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Take out a piece of paper, jot down some stats about yourself. Are you aggressive? Do you like to ride fast? Do you like to ride slow? All of that stuff helps. The, mo the more information you yeah. can put down and, and kind of give yourself a picture of yourself as a rider, that's really going to help. Yeah, and also, um, you know, if, you've, if you're going to be riding in the trees at all, yep. that's something to consider. If you're going to be you know, introduced to park riding and jumps and rails and stuff like that, consider that. Uh, if you want to learn how to ride switch or fakie, yep. um, think about that. And I think I advise everybody to learn how to do that. It's a good tool to have in your bag just to be able to ride switch. Yep. Um, so yeah, things to think about as you're looking at new shapes this season. So that's what we want you to do. That kind of concludes this chapter one. Is take out a piece of paper and and make a, a rider profile for yourself. And I think that's really going to help you as we move into the next steps here. Think about how many days you're going to do as well. Yeah. You know, it's like... Um, are you a weekend warrior or are you out there every day? Every day or, you know, be, be honest and fair with yourself. You know, everybody wants to ride more and more and that's awesome. Um, but be realistic and that'll help you hone into the right shape for the season. Yep. So once you have your little rider profile, uh, you can actually put it aside and then we're, we're going to look at some board shapes for Chapter 2. Uh, so for the second section of this video, we're going to look at a bunch of different shapes up here. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, JG, you're kind of saying there, there's really two major shapes. You're going to have a, a twin board or you're going to have a directional board. That's, that's what it comes down to, Jeff. It's, uh, you know, there's basically, you're looking at the out, overall outline shapes of the boards. Yeah. Not so much the, you know, the base profile or, you know, or the side cut. These are just the outline shapes. So yeah. you have a twin and a directional shape. And you know? obviously some subtleties among those. Yes, for sure. Endl endless differences. Sure. You know, you can make a lot of different shapes, as I'm sure you know as somebody mm -hmm. who has shaped a lot of different boards. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some examples up here of different shapes. We'll go through them pretty quickly, uh, kind of mention what they're going to be good for, 
Um, and then the third chapter of this video is we'll start kind of matching some rider profiles to actual boards, yeah. which to me is the most fun part. You got it. Um, so to start, we have two two full twin boards here, mm -hmm. um, but there are some differences between these two boards, right? There's too, some right. There's some differences. You can kind of see the differences. Um, the hub knife here is um, a twin shaped board. And a twin means your tip and tail shape are exactly the same shape. Yeah. So usually, same width. The, usually this the uh, the stance pattern is centered on the board, um, which can you can also set your stance back on that pattern if you want. But a lot of twin riders are centered on the board, and what defines a twin is the same tip and tail length and the shape on the tip and tail. And you can see this arbor board here has a completely different tip shape yeah. than the huck knife and it's the same shape on the tail. So the differences in these two boards is more of the outline shape, um, then you get into more of like this is a cambered board, this is a rockered board, right. and we'll get into some of that down the road a little bit, um, but right now we're looking at outline shapes. So this is some an, an option. And the third uh, twin a shape, more rounded would shape be here. more, this is a women's model from Rosingall, that is uh, a more traditional round shape on the tip and tail. And so these are kind of three different, you know, variations on twin tips, even though they all look different, the, the same tip and tail on um, both ends. Now, in general, who, who's going to be choosing a twin board, or what are these boards going to perform best? What's the, what's the benefit of getting a twin board? Most of the twin boards are set up for more freestyle-oriented riding, yep. where you're riding forward or switch. It uh, doesn't really matter which way you're riding. The board's going to feel the same going in either direction. Yep. And that's really good for hitting jumps, taking off switch and landing forward, or you know, going off forward and landing backwards or switch or whatever you want to call it. That's what these boards are good for. Yeah, sliding rails. Sliding stuff, rails, stuff boxes, like whatever. It doesn't have to be anything big. It can just be little stuff. And, you know, it's, it's something sometimes when you go to land, you might be coming in, off kilter a little bit and you have to land going backwards. Right. That's, these boards are good for that. So and, three twins there mm -hmm. and then moving on we have four actually the rest of the boards but really these four in the middle here let's focus on these for a second yep. we have four directional boards here. Mm -hmm. Now walk me through some of the differences between <laughs> these boards. Yes yeah, so on the directional side you'll see probably a lot more different uh, shapes in the tip and the tail. And oftentimes um, you don't see uh, what really defines the directional shape is that your nose length yep. is longer than your tail than your tail length. So basically, if you look at your nose here from here to the end, that'll be longer than your contact point in the tail to the end of the board. Um, and usually the stances are already set back a little bit. Yep. So you don't have to like set your stance back even further than what is recommended. Sure. Um, it's matching the, the shape, shape of the board. and the side cut and everything else. So this is a, a traditional directional shape where your nose width here is the same as your tail width. Yeah, and, and that's, you refer to that as taper. Uh, well, there, well, there is no taper in here. Right. So this, this is board has a lack of taper. Lack of taper. Um, and this is more of a traditional style um, directional shaped all mountain board. Yeah. And, you know, I mentioned before about the twins and riding switch. You can definitely ride switch on these things. Yep. And land switch or take off switch, whatever you want to do. So don't think that you get a directional shape. You can't ride backwards or switch. Probably especially on this non-tapered directional Yeah, board. it feels more twinny, yep. you know, like in that sense, because the dimensions are similar in that sense. Kind of splitting the difference or blurring the line yep. between what's over here what, and what we're about to yeah, look at. Yeah, what the directional boards will do, if the longer nose, a little bit higher uh, nose height, um, different snow conditions, yep. spring snow conditions, uh, wet snow, new snow, you'll have more nose to keep it, the nose up out of the snow. Okay, And cool. that's basically what the directional shapes are going to do. And then moving on, we have some tapered directional boards. Right, so boards, uh, taper is um, your nose width is wider than your tail width. And the difference is... Uh, pretty easy to see on that one. Kind of the taper, so uh, I don't know offhand the dimensions, but um, this board, particularly, um, the tail is going to be narrower than the nose, and so free ride all mountain boards, uh, around 10 mils of taper, it could be 8, it could be 12, but it gives you 
um, a little bit, um, the nose pulls you into your turn and the tail follows through and it's not as wide. So you can really get off your tail and yeah. put more power onto it. Um, so it's also, it's for turning and um, also in deeper snow, whatever, there may, may be in fresh snow where you can sink the tail a little bit easier because it's not as wide yeah. and that'll lift the nose up a little bit more. Thus allowing for more maneuverability, speed, easier control, speed control. Turning. Um, and so you look at this one, you can have, you can see on the Solomon where the, the, uh, the nose is completely different than the tail shape. Yeah, almost like a little swallow tail it back is, there. It is a little mini swallow. Yeah. And it's uh, kind of like some surf inspired sure. stuff right there. Um, and this one, the instrument is more of a, a traditional shaped round nose, kind of round squashy tail um, with some taper. And um, it's just a matter of preference on um, what you like, what, what you know aesthetically looks good to you. This has a little bit of a, a rounded cap um, yep. construction. Um, so so that's, not major performance differences between these tip shapes. It's more of a stylistic, aesthetic thing. I, it is. It's more okay. of like a preference on what you like, you know. Um, sure. And then you come down to something like this where this is probably the most directional uh, shape up here where you have a really blunted nose yeah and the tail is also blunted and you can see how directional this is it's almost like there's no rise in that tail back there yeah, there's, not a, there's really, not a whole lot really see the difference the stance is set back quite a bit yeah a lot and so um, this is unique riding boards where you're you're going fall line meant to turn a lot more than the twins yeah and just uh, a little bit more versatile for the conditions and terrain sure and then moving on, those those two boards down at the end yeah. there, um, we're kind of we were kind of referring to those as more of like specialty shapes. Yes, yeah, well, I would say specialty shapes that are more geared towards certain riders and certain terrain. Yeah. And you have a board like this that has a really long nose. It's a longer length board. Pretty stiff board too. Stiff board. So this is definitely for somebody who's a more aggressive rider, taller yeah. rider, uh, probably is a big uh, foot rider. Um, but knows exactly the length that they're looking for. Yeah. And the length is, length is a big thing. You, you want to kind of ride a board that, you don't want to ride a board that's too long for you. Yeah. You're almost better going on the shorter side. That's what you were saying is, is like, the shortest and narrowest board, which we'll, we'll get to in, in the yeah, third section right. here, um, which, which I thought was great advice. And then you have a board like this uh, Rising Sashimi here, which is a real true kind of powder board, specialty yeah. board. The board that you can go out on, you know, a major snowstorm, um, really long nose, really short tail, and a lot of taper compared to these other boards. I sure. think this was probably 20, 25 mils of taper or and more. And that, you know, that that kind of phenomenon that you were describing of, of letting the tail sink, that's yeah. just enhanced on this board. It is. It's like more of a, a back foot uh, style Smarty. riding that you're coming off where you can pivot off your tail and get sure. the board to manipulate a little bit more. But these boards actually go really good on groomers too. And I always encourage people, if you have a specialty board like this, to go out and rip around on, See what a, it can do. on a normal day without powder. And then when there is powder, you know what the board's going to be like. Sure. So those are the shapes. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it's obviously fair to say that there are other shapes, you know, oh, that like we were saying, endless. there's just endless varieties of, of, of subtleties that you can mm -hmm. put into a board. But I think this is a pretty good representation of what you're going to be looking at in the market in general. Generalized, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, if you're, if you're watching the full video, go back, grab your, grab your rider yeah. profile, um, and then next we're going to be talking about kind of matching up some of these boards to different rider styles. Perfect. So at this point, you know, you made your rider profile. You can take your piece of paper back out. We've looked at some board shapes, and I think this is the fun part is kind of matching up some boards to different types of riders. Mm -hmm. um, this has been very helpful for me, and since I'm somewhat new to choosing snowboards, I thought it would be fun to start with me. Yeah. Um, so, JG, I am at most an intermediate, maybe mm -hmm. more beginner. Um, I will be undoubtedly staying on groomed slopes most of the time. I have a freestyle park background on the skiing side of things, so the idea of sliding rails and hitting some small jumps is, I think that would be kind of fun. Cool. Um, I won't be going off trail. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of intimidates me a little too much mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to just kind of work on my turning, you know, okay. link, link good carving turns. So. Okay. 
lots of different options up here. Uh, I'm curious what you think would work best for somebody like me. I think if you want to work on your turns uh, specifically, um, then you should steer more towards a directional shape. Yeah, so kind of rule out these yeah, twins. I'd leave the twins alone for now. Cool. But, um, more directional shape with a little bit of taper, I really think would help out your turns. Yep. Um, the wider nose pulls you into the turn, the narrower tail follows through nice with pressure. Yep. Um, so you don't want to go with too much taper, like uh, you know, 8, 10, 12, and something like this shape right here, the instrument might be a really good all-around board for you. Sweet, that's what it looks like to me, is it looks just like a great all-around. You can do it, everything and go anywhere on yep. this board and, and progress your riding. And yep. um, you could still you know, go into the park if you want and hit rails, small rails and jumps and ride switch on it. And this will get you, you know, throughout your day and your season, this, you won't even need another board other than this cool. one. Yeah. Cool. So that's super helpful because yep. uh, now I know I can just go online and buy a K2 instrument and I'll be in, I think you'll in, be okay. in good shape. I'll be okay. um, the other person I thought would be fun to talk about, we have some pretty strong snowboarders on our customers, yeah. customer service team, yeah. uh, one being Pat, who maybe some of you have talked to on the phone. He's an awesome guy and an equally awesome snowboarder. Uh, he's been riding his whole life, mm -hmm. super strong guy, he's a big, tall rider, mm -hmm. you know, physically strong rider. He likes to ride fast and aggressively, uh, and he'll probably take some trips out west and, and ride some big mountain terrain. I think he takes like an annual trip out west to cool. ride some bigger mountains. Yeah. So probably that's not ideal for Pat, no, and no. same thing over here. These yeah. twins probably not ideal yeah, for Pat. Yeah, he, he's, if he's, if, you know, he's already been riding for a while. He's ridden a bunch of different boards. Yep. He probably knows what he's looking for. I'm sure he does. <laughs> I would recommend to him, on, on what's on the wall here right now, definitely this 162 from um, Arbor. I think it's the A-frame, which is like their all-mountain um, go-to board. Yeah. Really long nose length, a nice profile here, plenty of lengths, a stiffer board if he's a yep. bigger guy. Um, and if he's planning on going out west on a trip, he could ride this board here in Vermont, yep. take it to, you know, Washington or Utah no, or not somewhere. Not for soft snow. And you won't have to, you know, step it up at all. You could probably have one board do it all for him right here. Sweet. So that, that's a pretty stark contrast, I'd say, from somebody like me. Yeah, you, know, you, you wouldn't want to go near that. Yeah. I'd be yeah. along for a ride oh my on that goodness. one. No, I would never recommend, even just the length alone, I would say no for yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I coach for an organization called mm -hmm. Green Mountain Academy. I'm mm -hmm. wearing the hat right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're a freestyle, freeride-oriented ski and snowboard organization. There's some ripping teenagers on the team that are, you know, practicing their double cork 1080s yeah. and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so those more park-oriented riders, is that yeah. one we're kind of sticking yeah. over here? I would say we're going toward the, more towards the twin range. Okay. And, um, the difference in these two twins really is, uh, uh, you know, the outline shapes um, are different, but it's more in the base contour. Um, this yeah. one being a cambered board where um, there's a high point in the middle and the contact at your tip and tail. Yeah. And the arbor right there is a, a rocker. rocker board. And what the difference in the ride is basically you get a lot more grip, a lot more edge hold with the cambered board. Um, and the rocker board is going to be a lot looser. Uh, more forgiving, um, easier to learn some tricks on, uh, a little bit more playful, and softer snow and powder goes pretty good. Um, so if, you, if you've ridden both style boards and you know the difference in the feeling, but those are basically the two different feelings you get from okay. one versus the other. Now, what about like landing stability? Is there any different if you're hitting like real big jumps? Is there a preference between camber yeah, and rocker? You know, if you're going to be landing squared, you want to probably be on a on a cambered board. Okay. You don't want to get squirted out. And if you're leaning off sure. off a little bit, um, but for getting into park riding and playing around and flat ground tricks, uh, rocker boards are great. Cool. Maybe that'll be my next progression. There you go. Rocker twin. Yeah couple of years down the road probably. Hey. Um, so yeah, like we were saying about board shapes, you know, there, there's a, a variety among all these boards. We brought some good examples up here, but there's there's a ton of different stuff too. Um, and the same is true with riders. You mm -hmm. know, we, we just described three different types of riders, but you can be a combination of those things. Sure. Um, so not black and white, not cut and dry no, up here, but hopefully no. that gives you some guidelines yeah. of, of what you're looking at and, and helping you mm -hmm. helping you feel more confident about choosing the right board for you. And if not, 
write us a note and yeah, you know, call us up and uh, we'll help you get dialed into the right shape this year. Yeah, if we can't answer it here at Ski Essentials, we'll reach out to yeah. this guy because he's like in a, a snowboard <laughs> encyclopedia over here. Um, so let us know if you have any questions. And gosh, in like a month, we'll, we'll see you on the slopes here, here in Stowe. Here we go. So we'll talk to you soon. Peace.